Coming up on Eagle Vision News, the fountain of youth may actually be an athletic lifestyle. Stay tuned for a spotlight on health. And have you noticed the Biola Garden is looking a little run down? We'll tell you what's going on. All this and more right here on Eagle Vision News. Welcome to Eagle Vision News. I'm Carrie Casey. And I'm Clark Finney. Our top story tonight. Murder charges have been filed against two men involved in a UCLA student's death. The UCLA student whose body was found during a blaze last week was fatally stabbed. Alberto Medina and Eric Marquez were both charged Tuesday with one count of murder and two counts of burglary in the death of Andrea Del Vasco. The suspect set the apartment on fire before fleeing the scene, and LAPD say there was a considerable amount of evidence in the investigation. The pair appeared in court Tuesday for an arraignment. Airbags are supposed to keep drivers safe during an accident, right? Not if you drive a car with Takata airbags. At least eight people have died and hundreds more have been injured because of dangerous metal shrapnel that expels when the bags explode. U.S. safety regulators recalled millions of Takata airbag inflators earlier this year from Honda and Chrysler cars. Now the recall is expanding to seven more automakers, including VWs and Teslas. That's about 23.4 million driver and passenger airbags that need to be replaced. Drivers can see if their car is affected by searching their VIN number at safecar.gov. And Speaker of the House John Banner announced his resignation last week, and now California Representative John McCarthy is bidding to be his replacement. After struggling with the GOP party for years, Boehner decided it was time to step aside. Uh, so this morning I informed my colleagues that uh, I would resign from the speakership and resign from Congress at the end of October. Just a couple days after this announcement, Bakersfield Rep McCarthy announced his campaign for the speaker position. He is the only one to formally announce so far, but other contenders for the position include Rep Jeb Henserling from Texas and Jim Jordan from Ohio. Google is now allowing marketers to target their ads towards specific email addresses. Google Senior Vice President of Ads and Commerce recently announced the launch of a new program called Customer Match on Monday. The tool allowed marketing companies access to specific email addresses when consumers use the Google or YouTube search engines. Advertisers plan to specifically target users based on their product and brand searches on the web. Customer Match will be available to Google advertisers over the next few weeks. At the annual Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca in Saudi Arabia, hundreds of people died and close to a thousand were injured during a stampede last Thursday. The numbers were confirmed this week. Close to 800 pilgrims were trampled to death and about 1,000 were injured. The region receives 2 million people every year and foot traffic is dangerously busy on the roads leading to their holiest mosque. Saudi Arabian leaders are investigating the disaster because it's unclear what started the stampede. A man wielding a knife was detained at John F. Kennedy National Airport Saturday. Just hours after Pope Francis left JFK for Philadelphia, a retired New York City firefighter breached airport security armed with a knife. 39-year-old Chris Canella was allegedly pretending to be a part of a VIP motorcade and got through security by driving a black Chevy Tahoe, which is similar to Secret Service vehicle. Police became suspicious when he flashed what looked like a fake police badge and arrested him on the tarmac. Now we have Katie Post with us to give us the scoop on sports. Katie, how are the Seahawks doing? Cam Chancellor has returned and the Legion of Boom is reunited. Seattle Seahawks finally got their much-needed first win of the season, beating the Bears 26-0 at Quest Field. Chancellor has finally returned to Seattle after sitting out the first two games of the season due to dissatisfaction with his contract's compensation. The defending NFC champs had been off to a rough start at 0-2, Against the Bears, Seattle had a good game both on the offensive side and the defensive side. Tight end Jimmy Graham was finally utilized, had seven receptions, 83 yards, and a touchdown for the game. On the defensive side was the first shutout of the season, and Chancellor played a major role. Despite only having one tackle and playing limited minutes, just having Chancellor back rallied the troops to the defensive end. Chancellor's leadership and skill set may be the missing ingredient to get the Seahawks back to being on one of the best teams in the league. Yogi Berra, a legend of baseball history, has passed away earlier this week at the age of 90. After serving for the United States Navy during World War II, Berra signed with the New York Yankees beginning in 1946 and stayed with them for 18 seasons. Yogi is the holder of 10 championship rings as well as three-time winner of the American League Most Valuable Player. During his career, Berra also became known for what is called his Yogiisms, such as, when you come to a fork in the road, take it, and it ain't over till it's over. By all accounts, Yogi Berra was a champion on and off the field. Spieth cashes out at FedEx Cup and retakes the number one ranking in the PGA. 
Jordan Spieth takes home a $10 million bonus after winning the Tour Championship. Spieth handily won the tournament with the four-shot cushion. Here's a putt on hole number 11 that changed the moment of Spieth going on to shoot nine under par. This is Spieth's fifth win on t sorry, okay. This is Spieth's fifth win on tour for the year, which marks a record being only the sixth player to do so since 1980, and only the second youngest player since the legend Horton Smith in 1920. With the earnings, Spieth plans to take care of his team and hopes to keep the momentum going to next year. Thanks so much, Katie. Well, volleyball season's underway, and Eagle Vision is going to give you an exclusive spotlight look. Reporter Morgan Carr takes us there. Alyssa Mason, NAIA All-American second team, an academic All-American, GSAC Player of the Week, and fresh off the bench. Mason had her first game of the regular season this past Saturday night. This All-GSAC team member had to play a new role of being on the bench for the past three weeks of the regular season due to an ankle injury. It's kind of frustrating just because obviously I want to be able to contribute to my team and be able to play, but it's also fun to be able to cheer the team on. Um, it's definitely just helped me work on being encouraging and super loud and supportive, so that's been a good thing for me. Not only has this had an effect on the middle blocker, but the team has had to learn to adjust, but is excited for her to return. It's fun. It's fun to see people come back and get excited to play again. Gives you a good perspective when you've been sitting for a while. Biola University Volleyball is currently ranked number one in NAIA. All Mason is waiting for now is for the ball to be in her court. Yeah, I'm super excited. I've been out for like three-ish weeks, so I'm ready to get back. Mason got her start on Saturday, leading the Eagles to a three-set victory against Masters College. Volleyball hosts its next game this Wednesday at 7 p.m. to face off against Providence Christian College. This has been Morgan Carr reporting for Eagle Vision News. Now we have Kara Ramey in the studio to give us an update on health in the news. Kara, what's going on? Athletes taking part in the recent national senior game in the United States were found to have a fitness age up to 25 years younger than their actual age. Age doesn't make a difference when it comes to athleticism. These elderly folks may look older than the common athlete, but their fitness level is much younger. I'm 74 years old, but the fitness test says I'm 46. Exercise makes a big difference in the health and well-being of all people, no matter the age. I've had four cancers in the last five years, and I've been able to get through them all because of my fitness level and also because of a positive attitude. Yearly, more than 50,000 Pakistani children struggle to survive from congenital heart disease. With little to no medical care and only eight practicing Pakistani surgeons, the outcome can be deadly. My daughter was born with a congenital heart defect. It was very difficult for us to even find a doctor. Many children have to wait for months or even years before getting heart surgery. We work in a public sector institution where we see 100 plus children coming to our institute every day. A paralyzed man walks for the first time in five years using brain-powered computer. On Thursday, September 24th, 28-year-old Adam Fitz was the first paraplegic patient to ever walk without the help of robotic limbs. When it actually happened, it was kind of a dream come true, and I actually did it, so. Researchers at the University of California say outcome marks for a promising future. You can just look at the world around you. You know, life, life doesn't end when you're paralyzed. You know, it, it keeps going. At first glance, Biola's student and faculty-run organic garden may look a little worse for the wear. Reporter Josh Rosen tells us why this might be a good thing. Anybody walking through the Biola organic garden around this time of year may ask themselves how the garden could be so poorly kept. Piles of rotting cardboard, dead squashes, and nasty bugs are everywhere. But surprisingly, these all have purpose and contribute to the health of the garden. Dr. Tresser and his team have created such a balanced ecosystem in the Biola Organic Garden that there is no need for herbicides or pesticides. Eagle Vision joined Dr. Jason Tresser, the founder and coordinator of the Organic Garden, for a lesson on garden maintenance. According to Dr. Tresser, the piles of rotting cardboard are being prepared to aid the irrigation as an insulator, which then biodegrades into something the plants can eat. The dead squashes are allowed to die so that the soil can receive the nutrients the squashes originally took out. According to Dr. Tresser, more bugs means a healthier garden, as they help to kill aphids, nematodes, and other dangers to the plants. 
So really, healthy soil is just bringing in as many organisms as possible, um, and then treating whatever bad ones do show up. Nice. But generally, the more you have, the kind of God has created a system that kind of sustains itself. Yeah. So. Dr. Dresser seemed especially proud of the new chicken coop, which will help to manure the soil. Dr. Tresser, who has a doctorate in biology, runs a garden with only a couple of helpers. Despite its appearances, the Biola Organic Garden is healthier than ever. For Eagle Vision News, this is Josh Rosen. You see them when you're walking to class, when you eat in the calf, and you even see them in chapel. Reporter Jennifer Jensen tells us all about the man buns that are taking over campus. I'm standing here on the streets of Biola to get the scoop on the latest men's hair trend to hit campus. Let's take a closer look. Biola students are known for their eclectic hipster style, so I set out to get the inside scoop on the biggest trend to hit campus since flannel shirts and Birkenstocks. That's right, I'm talking about man buns. My mission? To do whatever it takes to find the best and the worst of all the man buns at Biola. Searching all over campus to find what students think about this hairstyle epidemic that seems to have hit Biola boys by storm. What is your perspective on the whole man bun craze of Biola? I'm not a fan. It should not should be on males. But I only know one person that can pull it off. That's Ethan Kadar. He's my friend. He's, he is he up. on campus? Yeah, he, he goes here. But he's like the only person I know that looks good on him. Man buns are sort of a spiritual reflection of a movement, really. How long did it take you to grow out your hair into man bun length? Uh, it's been about six months. Luscious locks, I love it. What kind of shampoo and conditioner do you use? Uh, no poo. No? Uh, yeah. What do you think about man buns? The only answer I have to that question, Jen, is how many man cards did you sell to get that haircut? They need to step up their game a little, but they can get there. They have potential. I think that everybody wants to have a man bun at Viola, so people who shouldn't have one do have one, so there's like too many that are not good. You know, it's just basic. Right. Just go. Oh, the, like flip. Map, the flip. You have the flip down. You okay. get it. You get it all up in your in your right. fist. Right. And you just flip it over. Yeah. And you put it up. With updates on the latest campus trends, this is Jennifer Jensen, Eagle Vision News. So NASA announced this week that they found water on Mars. Take a look at these images. They say that all the streaks and stuff that you can see here is actual water. So that might mean that there's life on Mars. Clark, what do you think? That's crazy. I definitely didn't learn anything about that in science class. I didn't even know that Mars could have water on it. Mm -hmm. So definitely a little bit mind-blowing for me. Yeah, I, I think it's a little scary, a little interesting. We'll have to see what yeah. happens in the next couple of years. I know. There might be space travel in our new future. <laughs> um, so California, we're obviously experiencing a drought right now. Maybe Mars can share some of its water with us. James, how is the weather looking like next week? James, so we're standing here in front of Echo Park where there's this apparently delicious pizza place called Maz's that makes this fantastic deep dish pizza. According to reliable sources, I'm told it's pretty fantastic, almost as cool as a cucumber. If you could pop on down this weekend, go ahead and try some. I'm told you'll find it delicious, but uh, don't take it from me. Take it from the weather. Let's move on to the uh, current. For today, we have 64 degrees in the morning, moving on to, as always, an uncomfortably hot afternoon of 82, but don't wear those tank tops. We're at Biola. And moving on to cool in the evening of 66 degrees with the sunrise at 641 and the sunset at 650. On to the national. We have no rain in California, as always. It's a drought. It makes everyone sad. It makes the farmers cry. But Nevada's getting some. It makes the people in Las Vegas happy and pours a little rain on their parade. The East Coast, as usual, has 5 to 8 inches in Maine, which makes toothpicks, just in case you didn't know that, and a good 2 to 3, 3 to 5 inches everywhere else. On to the seven day. Tuesday and Wednesday, it's, it's hot. It's still hot. It's 89 and 87. It's sunny. It's a warm weekend. It slightly cools off for a whole two degrees cooler on Thursday. Ah, you're going to want to get those jackets together, folks, for 85 degrees. Before heating up for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's still hot. Swim a lot. Wear sunscreen. Back to you, Clark and Carrie. Thank you for that forecast, James. I'm going to have to go get some deep dish pizza now. That sounded great. Oh, yeah, that sounds amazing. That's all we have for you for now. But coming up next week, we'll give you updates on what's new in the tech world. And we'll give you the latest on El Nino prep in the La Mirada area. And keep up with us during the week. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Biola EV. We'll see you next time.